Welcome to the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. These weekly podcasts feature expository messages delivered to edify the soul. Now let's join Pastor Dave as he presents this week's message. All right, I'm going to take your Bible and join me in the book of Titus today. Titus comes after the two letters to Timothy, right before the letter to Philemon. We didn't, I didn't get to finish this little series in Titus before we went on into Lent and then on to Easter. So I wanted to come back and just finish out chapter 3. And you'll recall that Titus, uh, the, the, really the book is, a, is about the church. Paul writing to Titus is telling him about uh, how to set up the church, what the church is to do, how the church is to behave. Uh, we've talked about leadership. We've talked about membership. We've talked about all of these things. Today we're going to come to a subject that I've entitled this sermon, Showing All Meekness. It's really about behavior, how the church behaves in the world. And so we're going to talk about that. If you, if you found Titus, why don't you say amen? amen? you got chapter 3 right there. We're going to read verses chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And if you recall, uh, I, I, I treated this passage in the pastor's letter, golly, when was that? Five, six weeks ago, uh, because I did, I continued on with Titus chapter 3 in the pastor's letter until we got into Lent, and then I went, I did some other things during Lent with that. But you can go back and look at the pastor's letter during that time, and there is a, there's one there that actually talks about this very thing, showing all meekness. So if you have your your, te- your text there, it's open. You've got Titus chapter 3 right there. Let me read for you beginning in verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometime foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You'll notice that it begins there in verse 1. Paul does, as he's writing to Titus, I, sh- I suppose I should review that as well. This is a letter written by the apostle to a man very familiar to us in the New Testament by the name of Titus. And he is on Crete, and Paul wants him to establish churches there. And he's telling him how to do that in this little short letter, only three chapters long. So there's not, uh, there's not a lot here, but boy, is it packed full of content. Paul writes to him here in verse 1, put them in mind. Now he's talking to Titus to tell him to do this for the church, to put the church, that's the them in this sentence, the them in mind, the church, put them in mind. And then you'll notice it says to be subject. So Titus is to teach them something about being subject. Subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates. All right. I don't know about you, but do you feel sandpaper already? Oh, yeah. Well, we, we don't like to be subject to anybody, do we? I ain't, nobody's, I ain't nobody's subject. I'm a free man. Well, that's true. We are free men and free women, especially if we're in Christ. We're freed from the chains of sin. And uh, so here we have him telling us to be subject. Now, what does it mean, this word subject? Well, just over in First Peter chapter 2, we have these words, servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good in general, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongly. So we're to be subject to our masters, he tells the servants. Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 tells husbands and wives to be subject to one another. So it doesn't mean to be a slave to, but it means to submit to. 
to submit to one in love. That's what we're told to do. And this is the idea here. Put them in mind to be subject, but now who are we to be subject to? To principalities and powers. In our world, there are appointed powers. There are principalities, that is, governments run by princes, run by presidents, run by premiers, run by, you know, emirs, run by whatever we might put people, you know, burgermeisters, <laughs> you know, all from the very top all the way down. And he gives that list, doesn't he, in just three words, principalities, powers, magistrates. So we go from the national level to the local level. The magistrate is our local, that's the idea here. So the national governments, the regional governments, the local governments, we're to be subject to those. Peter also talks about this in 1 Peter chapter 2. Just as a companion verse, we have it there uh, in 2 verses 13 through 15. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. So who are we to be subject to? The powers that be, and why? For the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So our subjection to these powers and principalities and magistrates and kings and governors and all the rest is so that we do it for the Lord's sake to put to make silent the foolishness of ignorant men. And you notice the word silent there. Because foolishness is best discovered by words, isn't it? We hear foolishness quite a bit from government authorities. And so uh, we're to put to silence that foolishness by living for the Lord and being subject to these powers. He says, obey the magistrates. Of course, these are the human representatives of the powers who make the laws and order our society. Now, there are some things that we may not like about our governmental authorities. Goodness sakes, have we been through that in the last year and a half? Uh, you know, and so many people didn't like the president. President Trump was such a bad man. And now we have so many people who don't like Mr. Biden. He's such a bad man. I don't think you could put anybody in that office that everybody would like. And Jesus Christ could come back and sit on that, uh, sit behind that resolute desk and nobody would like him. It just doesn't matter who he is. So, you know, we, we, uh, we find ourselves sometimes being, having a difficulty with this, and we want to talk about that difficulty. We want to show out that difficulty, but it's not that which we're to show out. We're to show subjection to them, up to a point. And let's, let's remember that it's always up to a point. Let's not forget Daniel. Because you notice that, that Paul, when he's writing to Titus here, says... Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. So we don't forget Daniel. He was ready to do a good work. And in in Daniel's prophecy, we have this. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, who signed the writing? The king signed the writing. He went to his house and he opened his windows towards Jerusalem and he knelt down upon his knees three times a day day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. It's wonderful for us to be subject to principalities and powers, but ladies and gentlemen, we must remember that there is a king on the throne in heaven, and his laws do not change. And even if the principalities and powers and magistrates and kings and governors and all the rest decide that we're not allowed to pray anymore to our God, well, we'll just have to disobey. But up to that point, up to that point where the law of the land breaks the law of God, we are to be subject We're to pay our taxes, we're to obey the laws, we're to do as we're supposed to do in an ordered society. This is good in God's sight. And I think we we know that we need that. I think there's something about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost working in the church in our day, in this season. We know that uh, we need to show out some sense of subjection just because there's so much foolishness that's going around. We need to put to silence the foolishness of ignorant men. And they're only ignorant of one thing, and that is the law of God. To be ready to do every good work, like Daniel, he continued to do good work. 
and we are too. We're to continue to devote ourselves to the Lord Jesus. We're to continue to bow before him in prayer. We're to continue to meditate on his word. We're we're to continue to share the gospel. We're to continue with every good work that the Holy Ghost puts in our hands to do. And you'll notice that when he says that, be ready to every good work, then he begins to give us a list of what that looks like. Notice verse 2, to speak evil of no man. Christian, what are you doing with your mouth? This is a good work, not to speak evil of men. First Peter chapter 2 again. I love the way these two passages work together. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when his, he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. We need to watch what we say. Now, this is, a, this is an element, we're going to get to it here in just a minute, but this is an element of our meekness, to speak evil of no man. And if you don't have anything good to say, then you know what you should say? Nothing. To be no brawlers, but gentle. Of course, we've seen this before in Titus 2, haven't we? For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Yeah, this is a part of what Paul is telling Titus to teach the church. You're not to be brawlers. This is not a Christian attitude. This is not how we act. We don't talk bad about people. We don't slander people just because they're not Christian or just because they do something that we don't like. We don't slander them. Not only that, we don't put our fists up. You know, this is not just about sword and fist, but this is about our entire attitude of life. You can be a brawler without having to ever strike anyone. I've known some ladies in my life that I love dearly, but if I was honest... I can tell you they were brawlers. They were brawlers because of their attitude, because of their words. I loved them, but, you know, I I don't know how much of the spirit of Christ they showed. Now we come to this idea of meekness. Notice this. I love what he says here about meekness because he says, showing all meekness unto all men. Do you notice how all is used there twice? All meekness to all men. He doesn't give us an opportunity to pigeon out somebody from this group. And he doesn't say you are to do it sometimes, but it's all meekness. It's all of it, the whole bale of hay, the whole thing. Now, when I think of the word meekness, I always want to go back to Moses. Because it said there in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So Moses tells us something about meekness. Actually, he doesn't tell us anything. He demonstrates what meekness is. You know what? Why don't we just, why don't we flip back there real quick? Numbers chapter 12. We'll begin with verse 1. Numbers 12, beginning with verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down on the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, when they were not af- wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Well, that's just down through verse eight. Next is verse nine. The anger of the Lord was kindled against them. So, what we see here in 
as an example of meekness in Moses is something that's very important. And that is, when we're to show, as Paul tells Titus, to put in mind to the church that they show all meekness, well, that means several things. There are characteristics of meekness that need to be demonstrated by the church. Number one, silence. What did Moses say in this entire encounter? Do you hear Moses say anything? Oh, you hear a lot from Miriam and Aaron, don't you? They have a lot to say. Oh, they, they've decided that they don't like this Ethiopian woman. And they don't like the fact that Moses has married her. So they're talking and talking about that. Then they decide that, you know, because he's done this, well, the Lord hasn't spoken just by Moses, but he's spoken through us too. The talk and talk and talk and talk, the foolishness of ignorant men. What does Moses say? Nothing. He's silent. One of the characteristics and the first characteristic of meekness every time is quietness, silence. Don't, you don't talk. A word fitly spoken, the proverb writer says, is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. But only a word fitly spoken. All the rest of the words, you could probably do without. So don't say anything. Just like he told us earlier in the, in the verse, he said, he said there, speak evil of no man. So maybe your words need to be parked in your heart and not come out the mouth. Silence is, an, is a definite demonstration of meekness. Secondly, control. Moses was in control of himself. The book of Proverbs chapter 16 says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that ruled his spirit than he that taketh a city. Moses was in control of his spirit. That's why he didn't speak. And that's why he went along with everything that was happening here, he let them talk as much as they wanted to talk. And then the Lord spoke up and said, you three come here. And Moses came, but he didn't say anything, did he? Because the Lord's going to speak now. He was in control of himself the entire time. This, too, is a demonstration of meekness. Moses was in control. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. And I ask the question again, Christian, how are you doing with ruling your spirit? And then finally, the last thing here is trust, not fear. Moses could have been afraid. Here comes Aaron and Miriam. They have a high standing amongst the people. Now you notice all the things that they're saying. They don't like his new wife. They don't like the fact that he's done whatever he's done to, to marry this lady. And they decide that they're the ones now that are the prophets of the Lord. And the Lord's speaking through us. And all of that, Moses is not afraid. Moses is not afraid that he's going to lose his position. Moses is not afraid that they're going to become the leaders of the group. Moses isn't afraid of any of that. He's trusting the Lord the whole time. That's why he's silent. And that's why he's in control, because he's trusting the Lord. The other side of that is fear. Fear is the thing that breaks all the rest of it down. Fear is the thing that opens the mouth. Fear is the thing that loses control. Fear is the thing that lets trust go away. Moses didn't do that. He was not afraid. I am so concerned about the church in our current situation. Not just Creek Road but all the churches, because fear has flooded our congregations. We're so afraid now because of COVID. We're afraid to fellowship together. We're afraid to be around one another. We're so afraid because we have allowed all the words of fear that are spoken in the media to invade our hearts and our minds. Fear has crippled us. But remember, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of what? Power? Love, power, and a sound mind. How's that verse go? Yeah, he's got those three things. But you notice a sound mind is a part of that. Because a sound mind is a part of the meek mind. It's not afraid. We trust in the Lord. And surely there are things to be afraid of in this life. There are lots of things to be afraid of in this life. But don't we apply trust to every one of those things? Why suddenly now... Are we so afraid that we can't trust the Lord even in this condition? Just an observation from the pulpit. So here are the characteristics of meekness. Silence, control, and trust. 
Moses demonstrates that for us. And so when we come back here to Titus chapter 3, verse 2, then we understand showing all meekness to all men. What are you showing to men? That's another good question that we should ask ourselves here too, isn't it? Are we showing all meekness? If not, this is something that we need to work on. We need to pray and ask the Holy Ghost to allow us that strength so that we're silent, in control, and trusting. But why? Why is this so important? Why is this important for the church to do? Notice verse 3 and following. For we ourselves also were sometimes, and then he gives us this list, foolish. And he's already, we've already talked about that, haven't we? Foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. This, is, this list really is just the opposite of everything he's told the church to do. Before we were not subject, before we were not keeping our mouths shut, but we were slandering and speaking evil of others. Before we were not showing meekness to all men, but we were brawling and we were angry and all the rest. We understand this. This was before. Before what? Notice the next statement there in verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Oh, I love it. Notice there in verse 4, we have the golden adversative again, the word but. But this something happened. God interjected into our lives something marvelous and wonderful as called kindness and love. It appeared to us. It appeared to us not by the works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Oh, friends, this is why we can be meek. This is why we can keep our mouth shut. This is why we can walk with control. This is why we can trust the Lord. This is why. Because we have experienced the kindness and the love of God our Savior. So why not share kindness and love with our neighbors? We have experienced the mercy of God in salvation. Why not then be merciful? We have experienced the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Why not share that with others so that they can experience it too? Oh, this is wonderful, isn't it? Verse 6, he shed this on us abundantly. So we have it in great measure. All of this we have in great measure. Kindness and love and mercy and regeneration and renewing is abundantly shed on. It's not just piecemeal and little pieces here and there and a little crumb, you know, a bread trail on the uh, bread crumbs on the trail, little things here. No, it's a overflowing. It's an abundance that He has given us. Justified by His grace. Ooh, you want some more? Here's some more. We've been justified by His grace and made heirs. Glory to God. Yeah. So let's go back. Being subject unto principalities and the powers of the magistrates. Okay. I'm an heir of the king. <laughs> he wants me to be subject to these guys. Okay. To every good work, to speak evil of no man. Okay. I can be kind. I can be loving. I can be merciful. I can do that because I've been given that abundantly. To be no brawler but gentle, okay, I can do that. Jesus has completely transformed me. In meekness now we walk. It trusting in the Savior now we walk. According to the hope of eternal life. Glory to God. You see, all of this is for us who are in Christ. And it's for them who will one day be in Christ. And so, why are we to live and show meekness to all men? It's because we want them to see this too. I was once like that, but now I'm like this. Once I was foolish, but now not so much. Once I was disobedient, but now I've obeyed the gospel. Once I was deceived, but now I know the truth. Once I served divers' lusts and pleasure, but now I serve the king of glory. Once I lived in malice and envy, no longer... I envy no man. Once hateful and hating one another, now the kindness and love of God my Savior has appeared in Jesus Christ. And I have that. I'm an heir to that, and I hope for that. And also notice, 
Here the doctrine is just so absolutely wonderful, so full. Notice that in verse 4, beginning in verse 4, all the way down to verse 6, we have the Trinity mentioned here. God our Savior, the Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ our Savior. The the entire Godhead is mentioned here and all that they've done for the church. So this is why we walk in meekness. This is why we show meekness. This is why we do it unto all men. So that all men might have exactly what we have. So let's make a commitment today to live in humility, in meekness towards the men that surround us in the world so that they too may embrace the life offered by the Son of God. Jesus will meet you. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.